line right now. If you're a blogger, press and media, you got to file something called a Rule 22. Google it. Rule 22. And you'll be able to show up in the courts as a press media. You get a press pass because everything we're dealing is public and on public record. He cannot stop the press and media from coming in, setting up cameras and tripods and filming. Rather, you're on Instagram live. It doesn't matter. No matter if you got 20 people from your blog or 20 million. I just want Judge Farmer to be exactly who he is. I want his conduct to be exactly what it's been. And I want the world to see. Because if he's doing this shit to me, I can only imagine the level of depression, sadness, and trauma this man has inflicted off on other people. So, 8 a.m. in the morning, public, peaceful protest. I just want us to all pray in front of this courthouse. I really encourage somebody to stay the course. Don't give up on your kids. Don't give up on your family. Don't read too far into what the outcome of your case is. And things will stay the same if somebody don't show up to change it. So, I'm sorry I'm not reading any of y'all comments while I'm on IG Live. I get distracted <laughs> when I look at comments. Uh, and, you know, listen, man. Uh, hey, man, I ain't got a knife in the fight. Yeah, you do if you're a father. <laughs> what I got to do with this and that, you know? Yeah, that's not your family. I understand you're not related to George Floyd. I got it. Breonna Taylor, I got it. But change change comes when you show up and you allow yourself to not be selfish just thinking about you and how you're going to benefit but to be selfless and think man if we show up to shed light on this judge who is abusing his power if he did that shit to me the average Jew ain't got a fucking shot in the dark so and for all of the feminists, women, mothers, ex-wives, current wives, I want y'all to know, man, I'm not attacking y'all. You shouldn't make this about you <laughs> at all. Uh, at the end of the day, it seems that the family court system has a preset McDonald's menu. And it doesn't matter what type of receipts and proof and evidence you show up at with to prove that you didn't say or do what you may be accused of. Seems like the family law court system always, always works in the favor of the mother. Y'all know this shit is true. Y'all like it that way. If it ain't broke, don't try and fix it, right? You have a two-year-old in L.A., if you get pregnant by an NBA nigga, you can get $300,000 a month just because. You think that two-year-old baby need 300? 300 a month for a two-year-old. You know fucking well you was on your way home celebrating like you just hit the lottery. And then in most cases, we're sad. They'll go get that 300,000 off of an innocent baby that never asked to be here. And then they drive the baby off at their mama house. And they out running around, partying and turning up on Instagram. So I'm giving you 300000 a month. And you ain't even at home with the baby that I'm giving you all this money for. Hey, man, y'all think these thoughts? I'm just the only crazy nigga willing to say it. <laughs> I will see y'all in the morning for a prayer. Peaceful protest. Speaking up and speak out, speaking out about what's going on. <laughs> I'm on my IG live. I'm going to call you right there. All right. Good to see you. So good to see you. I love you. you. Okay, I'll come see you in a second. <laughs> I love my neighbors, man. Oh, ATL.
with a life. But you cannot run, baby. Oh, yeah. Shout out to my brother. Come on, man. Shout out to my brother right here, man. It's his first time coming to the ATL. It's my brother right here, man. Since I was eight years old, man. Your family fed me. You had my back, man. All of the sports from baseball to football. I couldn't afford nothing. And Kenyatta was spoiled, but he was raised by his moms and his pops. They did not have to do anything for me. And they protected me. Many nights, I was dealing with all kind of traumas at home. And they'd be like, Yada would be like, yo, man, just come to the house, man. We got you. Couldn't eat, stressed out. And, and the level of love that your mom and pops, rest in peace, gave me, man. I'm forever indebted to you, bro. And your family, man. The Snowden family. It's changed my life. And I'm going to tell you one thing that I love about you the most, bro. You are the obvious person that could have called me and made reference to what you and your family did to me, trying to manipulate your way into, yo, you owe me, you obligated to. But bro, you've always been such an independent soul, been your own man, doing your own thing. And every attack that the devil has ever unleashed on you over the years, you figured out a way to figure it out. And for me, man, I just love you, bro, and I appreciate that. And... You know, I've said this to you privately, so I know I'm on Instagram, but it's like, man, as I enjoy the fruits of my life, it's like being able to look to the right or the left and actually see somebody that was around for real when I had nothing. Man. So, you know, he walking on this life in the Gibson estate for six years, man. <laughs> You know, I, I want nothing more than to have my real family and my loved ones, man. But sometimes you grow apart. Everybody start having kids and family, and we just out here separate and doing our thing. But it's been no love lost. And I want to shout out to all my real niggas from day one from Watts, South Central. All the dudes who really don't know me, they running around know me. Rather, I see you every day or not, man. Every time my name is brought up, you in barbershops protecting me. Like, you don't even know me. I grew up right, you know. <laughs> and it's always those <laughs> those arguments between who I really know versus somebody I probably met in passing. So all of my real loved ones from Day Dot, man, they all secure, they comfortable in their own skin, and they grew up like, yo, that's what he doing. What I look like running around with him everywhere, on tour, on movie sets and this and that. And maybe, yeah, we really been out here just doing our thing, man, you know. So, I just want to tell y'all, man, I'll be in the courthouse, 8 a.m., uh, peaceful protest, really, really, really speaking up and speaking out about the flaws, the injustice, and the shortcomings of the family law court system, which was clearly clearly never built with fathers in mind and i want to tell y'all too that for all of the feminists <laughs> doesn't matter what i say doesn't matter what i feel doesn't matter what i express you're always going to see things through the lens of women and as you should because i don't know what the male version of being a feminist is but there's plenty of dudes out here Fathers advocates, men advocates, men's rights. I, I'm not on that. But yet, God bless both sides. I want to tell y'all something. There is a documentary that you guys have to pull up and watch right now. Listen to me. There is a documentary called The Red Pill. If you've ever seen that again, if you ever seen The Red Pill, put a thumbs up in my comment. Listen. If you've ever seen The Red Pill, The Red Pill is a documentary done by a feminist who had a problem with all these men's groups out here talking about men's rights. Because when you think about the man versus the struggle of a woman, that's been an argument that's been going around since the beginning of time, right? But imagine a feminist, and I forgot her name, forgive me, sister. There's a feminist woman who said, I'm going to go and expose 
and shed light on all these men out here who already make the most money, who already got this and got all of that, and we're way in the back of the line as women. We still trying to, which is true, very true. There is no argument there about the double standard or the disparities in between the, the man and the woman in a lot of aspects of life, just in general, career, salary cap, gap, just everything. I 100%, and it's so crazy because even though I've had my share of baby mama drama, I've been very vocal about equal pay and all of these different things that a lot of women are very passionate about because I have two daughters. And if you guys were to accomplish all of these different things, abortion rights, just everything that's going on, then I'm raising two daughters. And the, the fight is now. We got to fight that fight now to make sure that our daughters don't have to grow up and deserve the job and have the man on the job to be paid more than the woman. That's not okay. And I've been very vocal about that myself. But I just have to tell y'all, man, a feminist, a passionate feminist did a documentary called The Red Pill. As much as I feel certain things that I feel, man, my heart went to a whole nother stratosphere because her original mission was to expose men and then out the blue something happens i'm not going to tell y'all what happened something happens to this woman on this journey it's called the red pill you have to watch it right now amazon prime apple tv whatever it is that you have to see this documentary you have to see this documentary called the red pill